So yeah, you're definitely welcome to join that. Yourself and start. Start thinking. I'll be wondering why it's built. You should sit there. It says you're lobby, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Can you see what that is? No, that's record. Uh, record. Hi there. Um, I just emailed um, Jaya and Carol and Chris saying we'd reschedule. So hold on real quick and let me uh, email them again. Hello. Okay. Um, hopefully, uh, Chris and um, I'm here. Oh, wonderful! I don't Thank see you. you. Huh. Um, Maybe. Uh, hold on, just a second. Wait, wait. No, my video is off. I thought it was on. Hang on. There I am. Excellent. There. I can see you. Can anybody see me? Uh, who is that? Jane. No. No. Okay. Well, as I can see, Chris. Hi, Jane. I hear you. I can um, hear you. I'm switching to gallery view. Thank you. Um, so uh, down at the bottom left, there's a stop video, a little picture. And uh, if you... Um, uh, if you... Oh, yeah, do you see a little um i see something saying start video uh i've unmuted it it's not like any other zoom i've been on so it's a bit confusing uh well this is probably the purchase version versus the the uh <laughs> free one um so jane do you see the little stop video icon at the bottom and then you click on it there's a little up no, there no i don't see it. there's nothing at the bottom i'm trying to find a little panel on the top it says leave meeting switch to gallery view mute start video share content that's it uh, click on the meeting at, uh, the meeting menu item and go down to it should say uh, start well, video no. click on the uh, one that says start video okay it comes and gets start video there we are yeah. Hit that there you one. Go. There you are. Oh, there I am. I see myself now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But I only see you one at a time. I used to be able to see everybody. If on get something called gallery view. Yeah, it's at the top uh, left hand, top right hand. Oh, corner oh yeah. I, I'm, in, I'm in now. I see everybody. Um, Lydia, did you uh, text uh, Jaya or could I you? Did. She's there. Oh, great. Guys, bottom right on my on oh, my okay. screen. Hi, Jaya. Jaya, how are you? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Glad you got the message. You're, you're muted, Carol. Should I unmute? I mean... Yeah, that's fine. For this small group, I think we can manage. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for joining us, uh, Saskia. Is that how you pronounce your name? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, should we... Uh, well, first, first of all, uh, before we start, um, I need someone to take minutes. Uh, and I'm thinking nobody wants to do it, so maybe we should just rotate because everybody hates it. But I'll, I'll, I can't. I'll, I'll do it if you want. Thank you, Chris. That'd be wonderful. I appreciate it. Um, so let's uh, officially start the meeting. What time is it? It is 11:44. May I just say I have an online doctor's appointment, and I, I have to be 
ready to hop on around 1130. So if I cut out about quarter of 12 or 1130, that's the only reason why. It is 1130. It's 1130. Well, it's 1145. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, they haven't called me or sent me anything. Okay. Go ahead. We'll just see. I just if want you, to know. If you disappear, we'll know why. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so apparently, uh, uh, I didn't realize that some committee uh, are doing their own Zooms. I got an email from Courtney saying that she thought I was starting the Zoom. So I'll follow up for next time to see uh, how we coordinate. So let me write down here and then uh, let's officially start the meeting. And um, can people go around and introduce themselves? You want to start, Lydia? Oh, sure. I'm <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Lydia Vivante. Jane Shaw. Jai Carlson. Chris Wisniewski. Carol Maganoff from the Energy Committee. Uh, Saskia Keller from the Provincetown Independent. Thank you. Welcome. I'm oh, boy, better, better behave myself. Oh, hello. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. How you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, Jane, did you introduce yourself? I did. I did, but I can't see Mike on my picture. Are you in gallery view? I am, but I only have eight slots, so maybe we weren't too many. <laughs> go, to, go to full screen so you can fit everybody. It should resize. Okay, uh, does anybody have any, um, any announcements or uh, comments? Yes. Um, um, it's about the census, U.S. Census 2020. And I think it's really important that everybody complete their census mm -hmm. form if you haven't done it already. It's super easy to do online. You just Google U.S. Census 2020. And it takes about, I don't know, five minutes or so. So that's really important for funding and all of our communities, including, you know, for the library, for all kinds of health services. It's, um, if you haven't done it already, please do that. That's all. Yeah, I've done. Anything else from anybody? I just wanted to say I can't stay too, too long, but uh, I wanted to give you an update on the recycling. That's great. You're the first thing on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so we opened up the recycling yesterday. Uh, it went very well. It was uh, our Mondays are a slow day for us. So that was kind of intentional. Um, but so far, so good. And it's single stream uh, with the limited parking that we had to use for social distancing. I needed to get people in and out quick. So uh, that's why we went to single stream. Uh, there's still bulky rigid plastic is uh, separated. That's not part of single stream. Um, and the food waste composting, I've got the buckets out in between the parking stalls because I don't have enough buckets for every stall. Um, but those are out if you choose to use them. And as we run the machines and walk around, we're giving those lids a quick uh, spray of bleach and clean them off. Um, so we're doing the best we can with that. We're gonna go with this for probably a week and make sure that it works the way it should work. Uh, and then we're gonna focus on opening up the backyard. I've got some equipment coming for the scale house. Um, some of it's on the way, some of it's back ordered uh, to be able to take transactions again. And then we're gonna work on opening the backyard. So that's, that's what I've got. Quick question, please. Sure. Uh, are we, um, we're back to purple bags, yes? No, the Board of Health uh, extended the purple bag suspension until the end of May. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Ma may I ask a question? If we have a place to keep our recycling, would it be better to keep it than throw it in the single stream? No, uh, it, it, it wouldn't help. Uh, I mean, it, 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 do, it wouldn't matter. It's, it's going to be recycled if you bring it to the dump. Okay, thank you. Thank you for holding on. <laughs> I know I, I've been holding on to mine too. I think uh, one of these days I'll take a photo like we discussed a few meetings ago. See what three months uh, looks like. All right. It's not pretty. <laughs> well, Mike, you saw what, what mine looks like. It was mainly wine bottles. Um, <laughs> I was thinking, 
Um, Mike, some, when, I, when I posted it on Facebook, somebody asked if the brush pile, if, um, if brush was being allowed. Uh, not, not currently. We've got the backyard still closed off because mm -hmm. we're unable to take uh, any kind of money right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so before we open that all up and, and worry about everything else, uh, we're going to try to get that squared away. There's a chance that the brush pile will be open before that. I could block off the other areas. I think I have enough equipment. Um, but unfortunately, history shows us what happens if, if the backyard's open and we can't charge for anything. So, mm -hmm. okay. uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's certainly understandable, but uh, not really was on the list of concerns at the time. But now that recycling's up and running, we're going to look at it really close. Okay, just keep me posted and I can let people know online. Yeah, and thank you very much, Chris, for being my social media liaison. I don't, uh, I don't use any of that, so. <laughs> right, not a problem. Is the construction and demolition, uh, that's not happening yet either, right? Well, that's part of the, the transactions that we have to work on. Uh, right. On, so. But my, my plan overall here is uh, I expect the summer to happen. I don't know if it's not going to look the same as always, but I expect the people to be here. And so everything that I'm doing is to be able to handle that traffic while keeping the distancing and the barricades and all the other things going. Mm -hmm. uh, so like long-term solution, but planning on having them come and, and keeping everybody safe, including the staff. Yeah. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to rush anything until I have the stuff in place. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And then the, the beach and transfer station stickers are all done through the, through online and through the mail. Isn't that right? Yes. Yep. And Suzanne is uh, taking care of that. We don't have any of the online sticker sale capability at the scale house. Mm -hmm. It's very prompt. I sent in for mine and got it within like three or four days. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> um, so uh, anything else, Mike, on you, were, you said you expected purple bag, um, uh, whatever it is, suspension <laughs> to be until when, end of yeah, May? Yeah, I think the, the Board of Health uh, said till the end of May or, you know, further notice for that matter. Okay. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's something that they're worried about at the moment. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's fine. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. And uh, also thank you, Saskia, for the nice article and for uh, keeping in contact. So that's very helpful. Good, I'm glad. Was that in uh, last week's edition or? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. No, I, I, say. I can send it to you if you want. Uh, oh, I missed that. Yes. But uh, last Thursday? Uh, oh yeah, last Thursday. Mm -hmm. That would be yeah. wonderful. I mean, I have the paper copy. I guess I just didn't finish it. <laughs> so I'll get back to it. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah. What was that? <laughs> I said, let's hope you haven't recycled it yet. <laughs> Good point. Okay, anything else on a public health uh, crisis measures from anyone or? Uh, oh, there's, there is a group that's making masks for kids. You probably saw the email. It's part of the Boomerangs, Boomerang Bags group and also um, Tressa, uh, Tess of uh, maskedmakers.org of Truro. So they're looking for, for quilting cotton donations, lightweight cotton, 100% cotton cloth to make masks out of. Does and anyone know if, oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Does anyone know if, uh, if Hillary is um, like accepting donations of cloth masks for people that need them or is COA, is there some sort of clearing person for? I don't know, I, Hillary. I can answer that. This is Courtney. I think she is. If you just want to send her an email and let her know, she can discuss that with you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Courtney. Yep. Is uh, any other qu questions for me before I have to get going? Just thank you so much, Mike. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Well done. I, my pleasure. It kind of feels good to do something uh, proactive for a change. Yeah. <laughs> going in the right direction, but yes. keep updated with everything else that uh, that's going on up there. But thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Lydia, could you share the information on who's looking for quilting material? Was that uh, Chris? Yeah, I did. I sent it, yes, I think two days ago in an email, but I'll send it again. Okay, thanks. Well, that's um, the same one. Okay. The website is called uh, maskedmakers.org. 
org. Our next agenda item is a town meeting date is now October 5th. I don't think there's been any uh, suggestion about uh, restricting it, what the articles yet. Some towns are, you know, getting rid of petitioned articles for this year. The uh, plastic bottle ban presumably would still be considered and uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Carol, I'm afraid you dropped off our distribution list for a couple of months there, but thank you for joining us again. <laughs> I actually knew about the last meeting, but I, I somehow missed the beginning of it. So I, no problem. I we will listen again. Um, Do you have so anything? the, the, um, the energy committee, um, uh, near to my heart is that Suzanne Ryan and I submitted a grant on last Friday to the green communities asking for a number of uh, improvements in efficiency to town buildings, um, LED lighting at the library and the town hall and the COA, although we don't even need grant money to do that one, thanks to Cape Lake Compact. Um, an energy management system at the elementary school and upgrading the water pumps at town hall. So, um, and a COA, improving the water heater at the COA. So we're hoping all of those are pretty modest except for the en energy management system and we're hoping to get that grant. Um, the committee has been talking about the new high school which is not um, net zero and really should be given the time frame and the new state legislation that's been passed. Um, we were hoping to do an electrical electric vehicle fair in the spring, but the outlook for that is uncertain given the situation. And uh, the solar array at the dump is also in limbo because uh, the courts have slowed down and, and we need to establish clear title before that gets turned on. Yeah. So what's, what's going on? Any questions about that? Yes, Carol. So is the title, I, I understand it was not, not recorded that it was town property, but is there any dispute or is it just a matter of resolving the... Uh, I don't think it's disputed. I think it just needs time to go through the court. Oh, um, um, okay. I guess the court's not meeting, so <laughs> too bad. Yeah, it's all just sitting there, <laughs> generating yeah, energy. Well, a whole summer sun wasted. I wonder oh. if, um, if Sarah Peek or Julian Sear could help in any way, or even the Attorney General's office. Um, I can raise that. We're meeting in a couple Good weeks. Idea. Yeah, I'll raise that, Lydia, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Carol. Uh, social media posts, thank you for uh, keeping up on the transfer station changes, Chris. Do you have uh, anything you wanna mention? You're muted right now, by the way. My husband was making food in the kitchen. <laughs> I see. <laughs> um, no, um, I don't have anything else to report right now, if there's anything else that is, you know, changing, just keep me updated. Um, I've put my recycling tips for on Instagram on hold right now because, you know, separating recycling isn't really a big thing. Right. So we'll, we'll come back to that. But if there's anything else that you feel that needs to be posted, just let me know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next thing is uh, on recent projects is the regional uh, plastic water bottle ban. I guess I would say that outreach is on hold right now. The various uh, items that we had in terms of um, report committees and engaging business community. Uh, the only activity that I wanted to report on was, and I think I did last week, is that the um, end of March water commissioners meeting 
they no longer have funds to help with the installation of the town hall water station. Uh, we need $2,000 more to do that. A year ago, they were interested, but it's too late for this budget cycle. And now, of course, everything is uh, everyone's trying to trim the budget. Mm -hmm. And they also didn't want to approve the plastic water bottle ban uh, vote in support of it because of a concern that what if Wellfleet's the only town that passes it and businesses are stuck here not being able to sell plastic water bottles in neighboring towns are. And I Hasn't thought, Dennis already done it? Excuse me? I thought Dennis had already done it, no? Hasn't... I don't think hasn't so. Hasn't Dennis but... already passed this? I thought it had. Sorry, my mistake. I, I don't think anybody's passed it yet, but I'm not positive. Okay, okay, okay. Well, w w Dennis was ahead of us on something in this field, wasn't there? I mean, maybe I've, maybe I've made a mistake, but I thought Dennis was ahead of us on this. I don't think so. It was on, it, it was on the, okay. uh, on the warrants for 11 towns, but they've all, all the, all the town meetings have been postponed so okay. far. So nobody's voted yet. No. That's okay. my understanding. I did see an article uh, in the paper about um, East Ham. It better have been the independent. Yes, it was. <laughs> um, it was on uh, April 16th and the Select board was uh, d was looking at, uh, or rather discussing the FinCOMS, uh, the Finance Committee's recommendation. And they had voted, some people had voted against it because of uh, their concern of the same thing that water commissioners expressed, that it might not be passed by other towns. And uh, the select board um, member, I don't know if it was the chair, said that they, it's too late to change it to put in a condition, which is what FinCom wanted to do, but there would be time, since it doesn't go into effect until September 21 at next year's town meeting, to say that it is suspended until such time as neighboring towns approve it. So that it's on the books, but will not go into effect until other towns approved it, which seems like a pretty sensible way to address the concerns, perhaps in our business community. So I just wanted to bring that up as something that we might want to uh, either discuss with the select board or with whomever. Any thoughts? That could work as an amendment uh, or would it be um, just written into the warrant? Well, it's too late to do anything like that, um, apparently, I isn't it? I'm not sure. But the way this, uh, the way the East Ham was talking about it is that essentially it would be voted on, mm -hmm. but it would be communicated that the town would have the option to uh, postpone implementation of the ban until such time as neighboring towns. So, so there would be a petitioned article or something on the uh, 2021 town meeting, 2021 town meeting saying that it won't go into effect until neighboring towns pass it, if neighboring towns haven't passed it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, a workaround. Seems like a good thing. Um, maybe we could just get the, the language from East Ham and ask the town about the uh, warrant article. Is yeah, this? I don't think they even made it, I mean, the the, the statement was it's too late to change the change the warrant article. Mm -hmm. So just communicate to people before they vote that mm -hmm. that there is a workaround if neighboring towns haven't passed it mm -hmm. by town meeting 2021. I guess it's uh, something we can communicate. So I was thinking that maybe we could. I don't know if we'd have to get on the gen agenda again for the water commissioners to discuss that because what they wanted, I took the action item to try to, you know, feel the pulse of neighboring towns <laughs> is what they asked. They wanted to get a feel for it before they would recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if we can just, uh, I guess we'd have to get on the agenda again to bring it up to them. Do you think we should, we should do that? Um, I just well, think we can wait. Yeah, I think we could wait. I still think it could work as an amendment. 
Okay. At, at a town meeting. Okay. I think that might be the best place for it, but I, I don't know. Okay. That's my feeling about it. Well, we can, um, should we pursue that now or wait to see if any other decisions are made about whether uh, petitioned articles are going to be included in October town meeting? Mm -hmm. I think that's a good plan. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Does anyone think we should be doing anything concerning outreach right now? I certainly don't have the bandwidth or emotional energy to do any outreach, but... <laughs> Um, um, there are some, some things that are coming up, which are water stations, uh, hand washing stations, exterior hand washing stations at beaches and places like that, public places. So there may be some uh, work we can do in that regard. It's probably non-potable water. I, I don't know. I don't know how that, how that will work, but that's something that Hillary might be able to the health agent might be able to advise us on. Is that something that um, that Wellfleet is talking about or are you just talking about in general? Yes, Wellfleet is talking about it. Oh, okay. I think all the towns are. Mm -hmm. So you, you're thinking we maybe could be involved with that or? Uh... Kind of talk, maybe we should just kind of gather some information about what the town's doing in terms of water supplies outside. Okay. And that could tie into the um, water stations, the drinking fountains. Right. Uh, are they talking about something that's just a tank within a kind of exterior sink? Or is it going to be actually plumbed? Okay. Um, what are these going to look like? And, um, okay. I, I, I have a slightly related problem about people, how people are sanitizing their hands and what they do with the wipes and things. Because a lot of those get dumped, don't, don't they, and clog up drains and things. That's right. They're just getting kind of tossed onto yeah. the roadway. Or... I don't know if there should be some kind of advisory on that, you know, what to do with them. And I'm not sure what we should be telling them to do with them. You there should be. Yeah, they don't go in paper recycling. That's they're usually, good, they're usually good, not. That's a good point. Not compostable. Okay. Maybe we could get some information together uh, to post on social media about the thing I've been wondering about. I've been yeah. saving all my discarded uh, gloves because it seems to me like you, well, first of all, the virus dies after some point on a rubber glove and or vinyl glove. How long? Or can you wash them? And if so, how? And dry them out? I mean, the other thing about the virus is Hot water and soap is much better than any chemical for, getting, yeah. for cleaning up the virus. They, they don't like hot water at all, but antibacterials wouldn't touch the virus anyway. Yes, Jaya? Um, with the gloves, and I asked, I have two friends who are doctors, not that they know chemistry. I've been, because I don't have many pairs of gloves, I use gloves. I just wash my hands with the gloves on, same as if I was washing my hands, soap and water, and I dry them on a towel because they're clean as if it were my hands, mm -hmm. and then I take them off and hang them up, they finish drying. So it's the same as washing your hands, only you keep your gloves on. And you yeah, do it very thoroughly. Yeah. You know? yeah. For and the, they felt it was just fine. But for the public places outside where people are, you know, oh, dropping them yeah. on the ground. Yeah, and, yeah that, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Absolutely. Maybe the town, <laughs> the town pulled garbage cans from a lot of uh, public places, including beaches. And I'm not sure about Main Street, but. They did, which I'm a little concerned about. I mean, other towns still have uh, trash cans out. Mm -hmm. It seems like if they were dumping them and had protective gear on and gloves, they could still, but mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the liquor store is the only place I saw that put a box out to take off your gloves in when you leave the store. Yeah. Uh, I have a suggestion. Perhaps we could ask Hillary and Suzanne to come to our next meeting and explain what it is that they have uh, planned for the beaches in particular. There is some 
uh, material on the website now about the beaches. I think they they were talking about the the restrooms being closed and having port portable restrooms. And uh, let's see, there is a statement from the beach director, April thirtieth. Yeah. Are, we, are there going to be new instructions for visitors to the beach? Yes. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. still, I think they're still working on it, but they do have, they're like no daily passes sold at White, White Crest this summer. Only right. people who have purchased Wellfleet resident stickers or visitors who have purchased three day, one week, two week, or seasonal stickers will be able to park at White Crest, and all other beaches should be open and fully staffed. <laughs> I thought White Crescent had been closed. Hasn't White hasn't White Crest parking not been closed? Yeah, it has. It's been closed to the the pay by the day. I see. Oh, I see. Oh, I get it. Yeah. But there are. Yeah, I think things are changing. So you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. So, but I think it, that's. It good did idea. occur to me. That, sorry. It did occur to me to if there are fewer people on the beach, but maybe we should have another go at carry in, carry out. They are, yeah, they are doing that. They, um, there was well, a, an email from Suzanne where she used that very term. So oh, oh, are, good, good. It is happening there. You know, people will take their things home with them. Do you know if DPW is suspending uh, trash and trash collection? I believe they have at the at the parking lots. Yeah, but, I believe mm -hmm. they are. They. They're not going to bring the dumpsters this year. That's what I was wondering about. For I don't some, think so. no, I don't think so. I'm not sure. Well, maybe there should be many more posters then about it around the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if if it is a de facto carry in, carry out, we should probably do some uh, promotion and uh, outreach. And, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good and idea some, to you know something. Um, Lydia, do you want me to comment on any of those beach trash yes, questions? Yes, please. please yeah. do. So the plan is to have trash pickup at the Oceanside beaches when they open. Beaches do not officially open, remember, until June, the third week in June. June 20th is when the stickers, um, well, June 13th is when resident stick, visitor stickers go on sale, and June 20th is when, um, you know, they're going to start to be really needed. Um, so they will have... Um, you say 13th or 30th? Visitor stickers go on sale on June 13th. The current stickers for 2019 expire on June 30th of this year. And the stickers statement, um, let me see. June 20th is when all beaches should be open and fully staffed starting as usual on June 20th. So when the beaches are opened and staffed is when the Oceanside beaches will have trash picked up um, at them. Okay. Okay. So Mark, Vincent, um, and DPW are working on that. As for signs for visitors and stuff, Hillary did mention today in the call that they're working on signage for the beaches, um, and she's partaking in a county uh, call with their health department, um, who are also looking at a reopening the Cape plan, um, and those, those updates will be coming within the next week. Okay. Thank you, Courtney. You're welcome. So there will be the normal dumpsters at the ocean beaches with those small little carry in, carry out signs, I suppose, that were there last year. The ones that you designed a long time ago, Lydia. Let's mm. see, let's find out. I, yeah. I don't know what they're gonna put out at the beaches, how big the receptacles are gonna be. Right. I'm thinking we could sort of make an opportunity out of the lockdown thing make people more conscious of the need to carry and carry out and you know bigger posters things like that. Mm -hmm. that that makes a lot of sense yeah kind of personal responsibility for the gloves you know, for all the keep the planet mm -hmm. yeah yeah in the nicest possible way of course we'll put you in charge of it jane <laughs> The nice part. <laughs> well, I'm stuck here for the summer, that's for sure. <laughs> Is that something anybody wants to 
look into, find any more information on any of these topics we looked at, talked about? Well, I was yeah. thinking maybe some of our artists could, could do some pretty good posters. Cartoonists like Daniel Dijon and people like that. Um, just make a bigger thing of it is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. A campaign. Yeah. Campaign. And we, it could tie into the, the gloves and the masks and, um, you know, personal yeah. responsibility for taking care of your own trash and stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Just wake up. Yeah. Because it does, it does take a lot of resources to pick up from the beaches and to, they're going to be doing a lot of cleaning, I think, every, you know, multiple times a day at places. So the, yeah. the more we can do to be responsible, the better. I mean, maybe we should have volunteer teams really cleaning up the beaches all the time, just patrolling up and down. Yeah, they did have an Earth Day beach cleanup in, well, I guess that Earth Day weekend. That was in the independent. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Diane. I have a thought about making it bigger with a carry in, carry out. It's pretty vague, but um, if there's a possibility with those um, signs that are on the roadside on Route 6 of which beaches are, are open and, and so forth, mm -hmm. you know, the electronic posted signs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Yeah. You know which ones I mean? Yeah. Um, is it yeah. possible if even the words carry in, carry out could go there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just start Good triggering, idea. oh yeah, I read that and I read it along with the sign about which is that, you know, it could be a jog to the mind. Mm -hmm. They'd see it as they were coming and going. Mm -hmm. I don't know who would be approached to even talk to about that. That's the police department, I think, that runs the, the LED signs. Mm -hmm. Do you okay. think it might be worth yeah. thinking about or investigating? Or? Sure. We could put together some ideas and bring it to the select board if it involves different departments mm. or Chamber of Commerce, maybe uh, in terms of uh, some kind of campaign with uh, businesses. Yeah. Well, so let's take those two words, carry in, carry out, three words. So. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we, um, we have one more meeting before the season starts. I have to go. Okay. Thank, Thank you guys. so much, everyone. Take care. Thank Good you. to see you back, Jaya. <laughs> I'm still on my way back. <laughs> Well, we can uh, collect thoughts and do any research anybody is uh, willing to do and then talk about it again in June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good idea. Next thing on the agenda is, oh, I'm sorry. Anybody? I was just gonna say, I know that Care for the Cape and Islands has that, that Take Care campaign, but it's uh, probably an issue all Cape wide with the littering of gloves and other stuff like that and uh, just general uh, That's a good point. I yeah. was just on a Zoom call with them this morning. I can talk to Jill about maybe if they would think about some topical yeah. signage. Specifically for this summer, that would be really yes. good. That's a good idea. That way we can, it we can be, a, you know, again, Cape wide rather than just Wellfleet. And I think they're trying to have a consistent message. Is there, is there any, yeah, is there any effort to, um, curb rentals and discourage people from coming. I, I haven't been following it, but um, and I noticed some had been stopping Airbnb people from renting in different places. Is that I, happening here? I, I'm, I'm curious about that too, or if there's any guidelines for cleaning between rentals, if there are rentals. That, yes, that's another, that's another problem I hadn't thought of, but yes, people not wanting to go inside houses to clean. I'm finding myself, I'm cleaning room by room, <laughs> which is a new thing. 
I'm told, I'm told people who are renting are boosting their rents to phenomenal heights because they're going to be at a, at a premium. Hmm. I just didn't know if there'd been any, any official discussion of it at Selectman's meeting. I didn't follow it. Hmm. I, I would be very curious about that. We have a rental cottage and I, I was considering cutting short the rentals. We, some people have already yeah. sold for May and June, but I was thinking of cutting them short by several days because I don't really want to go into the cottage. I'd rather let it sit for several days and then clean it and then let someone come in. But good at, idea. Yes. At this point, yes. I'd rather just have everyone cancel. Every time someone cancels, I'm actually really happy this year. There is a um, email address you can write to with questions to the town. Mm -hmm. Courtney, do you have that handy? It's um, it's on the town website. There's an email address specifically for questions, and. Um, this, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. The CDC does have guidelines on cleaning, and if you do Airbnb, they also have guidelines on cleaning. Um, but it's all contingent upon what your local, what the community has in place, what kind of restrictions, and stay at home advisories and, and all that kind of thing. Some places, okay. anyway, I don't want to get too much into the rentals, but mm. there is um, a lot of information out there. I don't know. If I'm worried it, about, um, about people who make their money cleaning houses. Mm -hmm. if they're not, if, if there are restrictions about it. It's actually, uh, I was reading that, that, that that's a big business. They're hiring more because there's going to be a lot more cleaning. And I don't know if it was a state or just a recommendation. Most people are going to have to leave a full day for cleaning in between. Mm -hmm. So there's 24 hours between tenants and cutting down to six days instead of seven for a lot of rentals. But I thought the state uh, had a hold on um, on leisure short-term stays, don't mm. they? Do you know, Saskia? Well, that's, that's what I'd sort of heard. Like I'm trying to. The, uh, minimum. One month that's minimum, yeah. I'm pretty sure that it's one month is the minimum rental that you can do. For, for what time, for how far into the year? I don't know. Um, that's a really good question. Yeah. I'd have to look that up. Oh. Yeah. That'd be a good article for the independent. Just the yeah, I think thing. someone, I think someone is working on that right now. Yeah. Um, I'll have to ask, I can't remember who it was and I'll have to ask them, but I can yeah. let you know. Um, one thing I wanted to say, and I don't know if this is relevant, but um, that article about the Earth Day cleanup that you were mentioning, Christine, um, I've gotten I manage the Twitter account for the independent and I've gotten so many questions from people about what sort of like safety precautions they should take when they're doing trash pickup ah. and whether there should be extra precautions taken. And I wasn't really sure how to answer those questions. I kind of just said like, be as careful as you can, like use gloves, even wear a mask. Um, certainly, wear gloves, obviously. certainly wear gloves. Mm -hmm. Um, when I'm doing beach cleanups, um, it's usually been brought in by the tide, so I'm not real concerned about it. Sure. But if you're like roadside stuff, I've been, mm -hmm. I, I usually just pick up stuff as I go. I'm not doing that unless I have gloves. Mm -hmm. And there's probably. Has anybody talked about whether the ponds are, are less safe because of the virus? Has anybody talked about that? That's a good question. Well, the, the uh, I think it was CDC came out and said that there's no indication of transmittal through water. Oh, okay. But they always say that there's no indication or there's no known transmission <laughs> until there is. <laughs> um, and another thing I was going to say, Saskia, is that um, Jesse uh, Mecklen at Center for Coastal Studies their mm -hmm. outreach. He's, he's working also with Care on the Cape and the Islands for coordinating, um, you know, all the different entities that are doing beach cleanups, and he might have some uh, recommendations that they're using for theirs generically. Oh, great. So great. beach cleanup. Uh, so water bottle refill stations, I don't think we talked about that yet, did we? Uh, I've been trying to get in touch with the Harbor Master about when they're going to uh, install the one that's been sitting in their garage for almost a year. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'll go down there personally and, and try to find them. And the ward, that, that's for the, for the Harbor Master's office. That's already purchased. They're going to install it. 
the town hall, uh, we know that it has to be in at the base of the uh, emergency staircase. That's the only viable spot. And we have the money to buy it from the SPAT sponsorships, but we don't have enough money to install it because they have to drill through a lot of concrete into the foundation and through the existing pad. So we need $2,000 more to install it. There was an additional 1,000 that was donated, what, at the end of 2019? That's true. So we could, we could put that towards it. Mm -hmm. um, and then raising an additional 1,000, we'd have to think about that. Uh, We've talked about, uh, I think, it, did you talk with Michelle? No, did I talk? Yeah, you talked with Michelle Dion, or she said to bring it to the board. Okay, maybe it was me. Oh, yeah, I talked to her. Uh, she said that we could bring to the to the board uh, a budget uh, request because of uh, the additional installation cost to see if mm -hmm. they could. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, though. We could use that uh, other thousand dollars. So then we'd have two thousand for installation. And if we could get another thousand from them, that would be. Yeah. Of course, they they can't do Oyster Fest this year, and that's their biggest fundraiser. And they've yeah. got you know program with, um, <clears throat> with keeping the shell fishermen or shell fishing industry going. Mm -hmm. But yeah. worth a try. I can uh, email Michelle something and ask them about that thousand dollars rather than two thousand. And Chris, Christine, that was the SPAT board? Yes, the SPAT board, yeah. The, uh, it's kind of embarrassing how long it's taken us to get this going. I mean, that was in the fall of 2018 that we did the gift fund drive and got the two sponsorships for those two uh, Harbor Master and Town Hall refill stations. Yeah. Uh, they each of them have been understanding and they're willing to you know work they're just things yeah. are different now so I think it's um, it's okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to get things done it's not always the way things <laughs> things yeah. work <laughs> and um, cooperative purchasing that's the uh, care for the Cape and Islands summits of collecting um, different nonprofits and people together that work on environmental things. The summits are specifically about plastic and I'm on the um, cooperative purchasing committee and we are working on a list um, of products that uh, are not toxic or the least toxic and the most compostable and um, sustainable. There was a Zoom um, meeting. They, they were supposed to have a summit at the end of April, which I was obviously canceled. So they're doing like half hour uh, Zoom meetings once a month. So we were, I was just on a call this morning about the next one is gonna be about composting. And um, Mary Ryther of uh, Compost With Me, who's actually just got getting out of the compost business, um, is um, gonna be, uh, the main, main panelist um, with Stephanie Murphy, another person who works at Hui and myself, talking about our res uh, recommendations for uh, disposable products for businesses. And that's, uh, that meeting is gonna be on 526. So I'll, I'll forward the, uh, the meeting announcement to everyone. That's great. Uh, plastic aquaculture equipment update. Do you have anything, Lydia? No, I don't. I know I listened in on a shellfish advisory board meeting of about a month ago, maybe. And they said um, they had a, a few people that had applied to be the intern. I was going to be doing research over the summer. But um, now things are all, you know, changing. So everything has changed. So they don't know if they'll have anyone in place. But it sounds like the, from what I hear from the shellfish constable and things that at the marina, there, you know, there's a lot of activity and there's, they're, you know, they're working, they're continuing to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they may still find someone to, um, to do some research on alternatives to plastic aquaculture equipment. Are they, um, are they 
Do they have people that are interested in interning? Yes, I had three people. Good. Had does intern people. mean no payment, or does intern mean some kind of minimal payment? What are, what are they um, looking I, for? I did bring that up um, just in an email. Were they looking to give a stipend of some kind? And they hadn't. They had they had a small amount in mind. Um, I think it would be really nice to be able to offer some money yeah. to that person if it does does come to be. So maybe we could think about that, you know, that too. From Are you looking for somebody in the middle of a college career or something like that? I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. I think there was a young woman who maybe was just graduating from NASA. Yes. Yeah. Very good. But, um, I'll, I'll ask about that. I'll see where they are with the uh, an application process. Great. Next item is producer responsibility for packaging, the main first in the nation law on producer responsibility and mass bill H750. You want to talk about that, Lydia? Sure. There's um, this bill that's being put forth by Michael Day of Stoneham, and uh, oops, let me see here. It's uh, trying to get producers of plastic packaging, and not just plastic, but all kinds, to um, be more responsible and have a plan on taking it back, or if they can't take it back, then to rather to uh, offer communities money to recycle it. As you know, we're saddled with tons and tons of packaging year after year, pretty much decade after decade now. So this, um, this bill, and I'm going to just get the text up here if I can. Sorry, it's in the Ways and Means Committee right now. And uh, it would create a sustainable packaging advisory board. And it would exclude small producers. Um, so this, you know, we're talking about the larger producers. And I think it's um, something that, that could really make a difference in, um, in the recycling that we do. A producer with less than 100,000 per year in sales would be exempt. 100 million? No, 100,000 per year in sales. So a lot of, you know, small producers would be exempt from this. Um, and the way this, the, the thinking behind this is that if these companies have to pay the state to handle the packaging that they will then choose more sustainable packaging? Right. That's it. And I wrote to um, Sarah Peake and Julian Sear and also to Michael Day to see if they would be willing to talk more, to talk to us about this. And oh, good. that was just the other day. So we'll see, it's, you know, there's a lot going on, so they may not be able to. And has, they, has, it, has, it, has it been piloted anywhere else? Other in, than this country or In Maine, Maine has a law. Okay, good. Was that fairly recent, Lydia, do you know? I wonder how far along they are. Thank you for following up on that, Lydia. That's great. Because sure. that's something major um, on all of our minds. I have a green, though, well, there's a green packaging working group in the city of Portland. Uh, let's see here. I can, I'll, I can let you know. Also, hold on. This is a January 20th, 2020 bill pending in Maine to make producers pay for disposable packaging. But it's pending. It hasn't happened yet. That's a, yeah, probably not, because that was January 2020. Oh, I'm just wondering if anywhere anybody on the globe is doing it. Is, is, you know, if, if there's a model, I don't know, in the Nordic countries or Netherlands or somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there is. Yeah, there <laughs> is. See how it works. 
I can forward this article to you as well. That'd be great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, second to last item, fall tax insert deadline is September 1st, if we want to include any information in the, uh, in the fall property tax mailing to reach all homeowners or property owners in, in Wellfleet. I guess the big thing is the cost. The last time we did it, it was like $360 or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we do we I remember Lydia, you talked to someone at town hall and yeah said, there's um in the collector's office uh the town collector's office about I think they were going to do a different um a different kind of mailing one sheet of paper rather than having uh separate okay. pieces okay but i'm not I'm not hundred percent sure on that um I'd say that's i mean it's it's always a good way to reach people but Maybe there's another way, and also the the tax, the spring tax bill is postponed to I think June, and then who knows what you know when if the fall one when that will actually be uh, when in the fall that'll be there's probably that will be extended too I think. So I don't know how do you all feel about that? I mean it's it's a good way to communicate something, but uh, it's not a huge priority. If I think we have some signs and some things that can can go up outside and specifically related to COVID-19 and uh, litter. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree that the last agenda item is summer 2020 initiative. So mm -hmm. um, maybe some of the things that we've talked about, we can focus on. Yeah, well, you know, like, yeah, carry in, carry out. That was my main summer initiative. Right. Use, use the crisis for that. The thing about, we had talked before about trying um, to do a pilot at like a pond yeah. or the Bay yeah. Beach. Well, the ponds are pretty good. Pond people, I don't know. The, because the ponds have a better reputation for yeah. hooligan. I mean, that people who congregate on the beach tend to behave more worse than people who go to ponds. I don't understand. I think it has to do with alcohol consumption and age. Something <laughs> like that. The, the thing about and you know, people, pilot, in the, people in the mountains don't make trash as well. Either. Yeah, the thing about uh, carry and carry out pilots is um, I've heard Carrie Purcell talk about it, and then they know it works, but it takes like the first year people are like, "Huh, I'll just leave it here and they'll come peep it, clean it up." But by the second year, it starts sinking in. Okay. So it might be worse before it's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But maybe in this in this environment when people are thinking differently and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well that's why especially use use the crisis as an opportunity like the chinese say right that yeah. would that would probably take uh, going to the select board to discuss um, approval for a pilot or something what do you think lydia how one would approach that yeah i think if um Say so take care for the Cape Town that that program has a carry and carry out component, mm -hmm. or if they could develop that quickly, that might be a good thing that we could mm -hmm. offer. This you know if the sign is already created with the, the message, the right message, and uh, even if it's they have, I mean, I think some of the guidance right now is for carry and carry out before the beach is open. Mm -hmm. I mean, before the beaches um, require stickers. Sorry. Because the right. beaches are remain open, it's, uh, and I don't know if the. I mean, Courtney brought up that the ocean beaches will have trash receptacles. Will all areas in town have trash receptacles? All the other, I think there are something like eighty trash cans throughout town in the past. Mm -hmm. So, what's going to happen this year? just how many are they willing to put out there? And um, it does take labor, it does take time to service all of those. So maybe in the places where they're not placed, there could be some signs. Well, I can um, reach out to DPW to find out what their current plans are. Mm -hmm. Uh, if they're trying to cost cut, they may forego the the uh, Fraser dumpsters that they had at the ocean beaches. Mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know. Yeah. 
Okay, does anybody else, uh, anybody have anything they'd like to bring up? Okay. So if not, then meeting is adjourned as of whatever the current time is, 1239 p.m. Thank you all for your patience.